Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Cooper and welcome back to SIS Film Breakdowns. The next division we are going to cover is the AFC West. Aside from the Raiders, the rest of the division ranked in the 20s, but each of the teams picked up some impact players that should contribute early on. Let's highlight a few of the prospects drafted into this division, starting with the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos had 10 picks in the draft, and with their first two picks gave the offense more weapons than Alabama's Jerry Judy and Penn State's KJ Hamler. Both of them paired with Cortland Sutton serve as a solid trio for Denver's receiving core. They grabbed some decent depth on defense with Michael Ojemudia, McTelvin Aguim, and Justin Chernad. Two of the players I want to highlight should also help make an impact to the offensive side of the ball, and that's LSU center Lloyd Cushenberry and Missouri tight end Albert Okue Boonham. First up for the Broncos is Lloyd Cushenberry. At the combine, Cushenberry measured in at 6 feet, 3 and 1 eighths inches, 312 pounds. He did 25 reps on the bench and ran a 5.27 on his first 40 attempt before pulling a hamstring on his second and ending his workout early. Cushenberry, along with Caleb Von Chason, was a recipient of the number 18 jersey for LSU, which best represents what it means to be an LSU football player on and off the field. Though he couldn't wear it, he wore a number 18 patch for the season. A team captain, he started 28 games for LSU the past two seasons, helping lead the team to a national championship this past season. Cushenberry declared early for the draft, and Denver selected him in the third round at pick number 83 overall. Let's take a look at a couple of his plays against Alabama and Florida. This first play is from the Alabama game. It's going to be a pass play, and we'll get a good look at the awareness Cushenberry possesses from the center position. Now at the snap of the ball, we see that Cushenberry knows that his guards are one-on-one -on -one and the backer doesn't come right away. He quickly notices that Xavier McKinney is rushing off the edge, so he peels out of the middle to the outside to make sure McKinney doesn't get a hit on his quarterback. Even though Burrow reads it well and gets the ball out quickly, this is a good job by Cushenberry seeing this and reacting quickly to the play. Now let's take a look at the Florida play. We saw Cushenberry in pass pro, now let's take a look at the run game. At the snap, Cushenberry gives a quick jab to help his left guard before working to the second level. He comes in balanced and under control. He seals the defender to keep the lane open for his running back to run through. And the alley that he and his teammates create allows Edwards Allaire to run through the second level cleanly, make a one-on-one -on -one move with the safety, and get down the field for a huge 50 plus yard gain to help set up first and goal. Cushenberry is a good athlete with solid awareness and he should bring a positive contribution to the Broncos offensive line at the center position. Taking a look now at how his teammates fared running to his gap last season, they averaged over 5.5 yards per carry and more than 3 yards before contact, creating a positive play 55% of the time. Next for the Broncos is tight end Albert Okue Boonham out of Missouri. In Indianapolis, he measured in at 6 feet, 5.5 inches, 258 pounds. The only time he posted was a 40 at 449, which is a great time for his size and a tight end in general. Okue Boonham burst onto the scene as a redshirt freshman in 2017, putting up 11 touchdowns on only 29 receptions. He's since battled injuries, but leaves Missouri with the second most receiving touchdowns in program history with 23. Declaring early for the NFL draft, the Broncos selected him in the fourth round with the 118th overall pick. Let's take a look at two of his plays from his 2018 game against Georgia and 2019 game against West Virginia. On this first play against West Virginia, Okue Boonham is lined up in line to the right side of the offensive formation. He's going to run a borderline post corner post here. At the snap of the ball, he gets a free release off the line and attacks the DB. Once he breaks the DB's cushion, Okue Boonham breaks to the outside for about four steps and then breaks to the post. He could stand to do a little better job here, not making contact with the defender as it sort of makes him stumble, but his precise cut to the middle of the field forces the DB to fall down and allows for the uncontested catch. As we take a look at the tight angle, we see him attack the defender, break to the outside, and then break back to the post for an easy catch and touchdown here. Now let's take a look at the Georgia play. Okue Boonham is now lined up in the slot as the number two in the trip set to the right side of the formation. He's going to run a double move here with a stick nod. Now off the line, he attacks the defender and near the two yard line, he breaks down and gives the move to the outside, faking the stick, which makes the defender jump out with him. Okue Boonham is quick to turn his body back to the middle of the field. And even though the defender is draped all over him, he's able to make a tough contested catch here for the score. Akue Boonham is a good athlete who seems to just score touchdowns, and now that he's reunited with his former quarterback, Drew Locke, that should build chemistry right away for the Denver offense. His stats last year without Locke took a dip from what they were in 2018, 
but if he can bring his 2018 play to the NFL on a consistent basis, six touchdowns and a 97% on-target catch rate from the tight end position is nothing to sneeze at. The Chiefs followed their Super Bowl run by adding a national champion at the end of the first round in LSU's Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Edwards-Alaire fits perfectly into the Chiefs offense and his ability as a runner and receiver will help Patrick Mahomes out of the backfield. Mississippi State linebacker Willie Gay was their second round selection. As long as he keeps his nose clean off the field, his athleticism is off the charts on it. Lucas Niang is a good project at tackle and Legereus Sneed and Mike Dana should fit as solid contributors for the defense. We're going to take a look now at their seventh round selection, Tulane corner Thakarius Keys. At the combine, Keys measured in at 6 feet, 7 eighths of an inch, 202 pounds. The only drills he took part in were the vertical where he posted a 36 inch jump and the broad jump where he posted a jump of 10 and a half feet. A basketball first athlete, he didn't start playing football until his junior year of high school. Keys went on to be a two year starter who played in 39 games over his career for Tulane. The Chiefs drafted him in the seventh round with pick 237 overall. We're going to take a closer look at one of his plays last season against Florida International. Keyes is lined up at the top of the screen in tight press coverage to the right of the offensive formation. He has number one all the way here. And at the snap, he could do a little bit better of a job being more physical at the line and not allowing as free a release, but does get his hands on and turns and runs with the receiver. Once the receiver feels like he's getting on top of Keyes here, the receiver tries to stack him. And Keyes does a good job staying strong and not allowing him to stack and get all the way on top. Now with the ball in the air, Keys does a really good job here of tracking the ball all the way in, laying out, and making an incredible grab for the interception. On the other angle, we get a good look at him jumping, laying out, and making a great grab for an interception to get the ball back for his offense. For a Chiefs cornerback room that needs all the help they can get, Keys brings good play speed and ball skills and has a shot to make the roster. Last season, he only allowed a 46% completion rate, giving up a positive play 43% of the time in zone coverage and a mere 33% of the time in man coverage. The Raiders are headed to Vegas. The first draft pick for the new city saw Raiders go back to the Al Davis days in speedster Henry Ruggs. After selecting cornerback Damon Arnett with their second first round pick to help the defense, the Raiders took two more receivers with back-to-back -back picks in the third round in versatile Lynn Bowden and Brian Edwards. They plan to give Derek Carr plenty of weapons and opportunities. Mike Mayock brought in two more Clemson Tigers to the team in Tanner Muse and John Simpson before their final selection of Amik Robertson out of Louisiana Tech. We're going to take a closer look at Brian Edwards and Amik Robertson. First up for the Raiders is Brian Edwards. At the combine, Edwards measured in at 6 feet, 2 and 3 quarters inches, 212 pounds. He had some injury concerns coming into the draft, missing the final two games of the season with a knee injury and then breaking his foot in February during training, which forced him to miss the combine. The offensive MVP for the Gamecocks in 2019, Edwards leaves South Carolina as the record holder for most career receptions, receiving yards, and consecutive games with a catch with 48, which was every game he played in. Edwards was a team captain and the Raiders took him in the third round at pick number 81. We're going to take a look at a couple of his plays against Tennessee from this last season. This first play sees Edwards lined up at the top of the screen, split out wide to the right of the offense. This is going to be a deep out route. Now at the snap of the ball, Edwards stems inside. This is a smart play and is taught by most coaches that if you're lined up on the numbers, it's hard to actually run an outbreaking route when lined up that far outside where the receiver will be on the sideline too quick. So in this case, Edwards stems inside to give himself a little bit of room. Now at the top of the route, he does a good job dropping his weight here and breaking out quickly. The corner has a tough time flipping his hips to get back in position and stay with Edwards as he goes up and makes the catch for, for, for the first down. Now on the other view, we see him at the bottom left corner, drop his hips, break outside, and go up to make a strong hands catch. On the next play, Edwards is lined up as the outside receiver or number one to the right of the formation. It's third and about 10, and he's going to run a go route. He stutters off the line and then attempts to win over the top. The corner does a pretty good job here to stay on top, but Edwards shows good strength to not get driven out of bounds. This is a great ball by the quarterback, putting it up over the head of the corner where only his man can get it. And while Edwards is fighting for position with the DB, the ball comes in hot and only he can go up and get it and has to go up with one hand and make a grab. This is an absolutely incredible catch that ends up getting called down at the one, but a great catch nonetheless. And then on the other view, we get a great look here, Edwards going up with one hand to make a spectacular catch. 
Edwards shows Trace to be a playmaker for the offense, and he should give quarterback Derek Carr a solid weapon on the outside. He put up some good numbers last season before he got hurt, which included a 91% on-target catch rate and 7.7 .7 yards after the catch per reception. Next up for Las Vegas is Amik Robertson. Robertson measured in at 5 feet 8 and 3 eighths inches at the combine, but chose not to work out. Robertson started all three seasons for the Bulldogs, which culminated in a 2019 season that saw him named a second-team AP All-American. Robertson leaves Louisiana Tech with 54 pass breakups and 14 interceptions over his career. The Raiders selected him in this fourth round with 139th overall selection. Let's take a look at one of his plays from last season against Texas. Robertson is lined up at the bottom of the screen about eight yards off the ball and he is going to be in zone coverage. The number one is going to run a hitch while the number two is going vertical with a bender to the middle of the field. Now the snap, Robertson's zone turns to the field and gets deep. His eyes are on the quarterback but he has good feel for the two receivers to his side knowing that he has to stay deep. Once the number two gets on top of the linebacker and starts to the bend to the middle of the field, Robertson shows outstanding awareness to break and undercut the route knocking the ball away. Now on the other view, we get a better view of him knocking the ball away with a frame just over 5'8", and he needed every inch to be able to lay out and tip that one away. Robertson has a small frame, but his instincts, ball skills, and coverability are up there with anyone's in this class. He should step in right away as a nickel defender for Vegas. Looking at last year's numbers, Robertson's 32.0 quarterback rating against was 7th among all DBs in the country, while only allowing a 53% deserved catch rate. His 56 total points were tops among all corners that made their way in the SIS Football Rookie Handbook. The Chargers lost Phillip Rivers to the Colts, so what's next? Take a quarterback with their first round pick, and that quarterback was Oregon's Justin Herbert. Herbert has good size and a strong arm and should compete right away for the job. The Chargers traded back into the end of the first round to grab Oklahoma linebacker Kenneth Murray, and Murray brings a lot of speed and range and should fit in nicely to the middle of that defense. After taking a couple of offensive players and Joshua Kelly and Joe Reed, the Chargers selected safety Alohi Gilman out of Notre Dame. We're going to take a closer look at what Gilman brings to the defense. At the combine, Gilman measured in at 5 feet, 10 and a half inches, 201 pounds. He put up some solid numbers in Indianapolis, which included 17 bench reps, a 408 shuttle, and a 6813 cone that tied for fourth among all combine participants. Gilman began his college career at Navy, where he started 12 games in 2016. In two seasons with Notre Dame, he recorded 168 tackles, three interceptions, and six forced fumbles. A team captain in 2019, Gilman declared early for the NFL draft where the Chargers selected him in the sixth round at number 186 overall. Let's take a closer look at Gilman from his 2018 game against Vanderbilt and last season's game against USC. Let's start with the 2018 Vanderbilt game. Gilman is lined up here about 10 yards off the ball and is creeping toward the line of scrimmage. At the snap, Gilman does a good job reading and reacting to where the back is going. There's a hole that opens up in the left A gap, but instead of shooting that and trailing the back to track him down, Gilman pursues over the top and lays a big hit on the back for just a short gain here. Now let's take a look at the USC game from last season. Gilman is near the top of the screen as the right safety in the defense. It's an empty set from USC and is going to be a quick hitter. And just before the snap, Gilman rolls down to take the number two, and once the receiver begins to drag across the field, Gilman bursts to close on the ball. Even though the receiver made the grab here, Gilman is strong with his tackle, pushing him back and not allowing any yards after the catch. Gilman is a very aggressive defender in the short to intermediate areas of the field. He should be a standout special teams player and rotational piece in the secondary right away for LA. His 2019 was down compared to the 2018 season in which he put up 97 tackles with an adjusted tackle depth plus of 112 and allowed only 5.5 yards per target and a 48% positive play rate in coverage. Now what questions need to be answered moving forward in the AFC West? The Chiefs offense is one of the best, but do they have enough on defense to slow teams down and make it back to the Super Bowl? Will all the talent the Broncos are piling up on offense translate to more wins? Will a move to Las Vegas and more speed added to the offense get the Raiders back in the hunt? The Phillip Rivers era is over for the Chargers, but can a strong defense make up for that loss? We'll see what sort of contributions the 2020 draft class has on the AFC West over the next few seasons and find out what the answers are to these questions. Make sure to go get the SIS Football Rookie Handbook 
or register for a free trial on the SIS Data Hub to see all of these stats and more for every player. And also tune in each week to the Off the Charts podcast. Thanks for watching SIS Film Breakdowns.